Well, we made it to Matsura here in Japan, and I cannot even express how excited I am, but I am darn sure going to try, and let me tell you why. I get to talk with Katsu today here in Japan. Matsura, we see, we even see somebody on that screen we might recognize at the same time. Now we're talking about 1935 start. We're talking about a 1991 palette change, five axis leader. When we think about the beginning of how it was all done, we talk about the conversations of being able to run autonomously through the night, seven days a week, oftentimes reducing third shifts and second shifts reliably enough that when we knew we were coming back to work, we had no stress and no worry. And how did a lot of this come to pass? I say we head outside and talk to Katsu right now. And beyond that, you are going to get to see one incredible machine with 72 pallets feeding several machines. So without any further ado, please join me. We got to go say hi to Katsu. And I want to show you what's going on in this facility. Good to see you, Katsu. See you. Thank you right. so much, my friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Katsu, yeah. Katsu, Katsu. Let right. me just say with the world watching on camera right now, oh my God. a big <laughs> thank you for allowing us to come in to the headquarters here in Japan and speak with you. Right. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you, Tony. So. It's good to see right. you. It's, it's good, good to see, see your you. smile. Mm. Can we briefly talk about mm. a little bit of the history of the company? Now, I know 1935, yep. speaking with you, there was a house and a garage, yep. and this is how the shop started. You have been born into this whole situation, but yep. can we talk about Matt Sura and the growth that your father started? All right. Uh, as you said, in uh, my grandfather, uh, was found this company in 1935. And then, as you told, so it was small house at that small garage where he started out. So, so uh, at that time, he was actually the uh, first machining, uh, machinist you know, uh, to work for the machine shop. So then the company went bankrupt. Then the customer was you know, uh, it's, it's, it's having problems. So, and then they asked, uh, our grandfather, can you start in own your business? We're gonna give you the jobs for you. So, so that's how he started out. Then, but he couldn't be satisfied with just doing machinists. So he wanted to make machines. So, so that's why you know, he started this machine machine you know uh, uh, manufacturer at the time. So. I know there's a lot of history here, and right. there's a lot of in-between steps right. to where I'm about to take the audience mm -hmm. to now, but I want to go back to 1991. Right. Right. You are known, these beautiful blue machines we see behind us right now, you right. are known worldwide right. as a leader in five-axis pallet change high-precision machines. Right. Right? Mm. I mean, incredible. Now, you and I have spoken, but I like the story, and I'd love to share it with the audience that's watching, right. about... In 1991, the mm. concept was kind of ahead of itself, just the idea. And don't worry, audience, we are going to talk about everything that's happening <laughs> right. behind us. But I want to build a foundation real quick okay. about just being so ahead of your time in 91. The original developments, we weren't even really with, into the five axis machine at that time, were we? Right, that, that's right. So at the time, you know, uh, first of all, you know, we had a, such a model, you know, when, um, my grandfather had, you know, do what others don't. So, so we want to be unique, we want to be advanced, and, and so on. So, so that was sort of our dream. So, in, as you said, in 1991, so we kind of popped up idea by my father at the time. He was very charismatic, he was a very creative and idea man. So, so probably in, in the future, three days in a uh, break, weekend it's it's going to be necessary for people in you know, the living so we're gonna have machine in, in uh, having you know 72 hours kind of unmanned operation lights out solution so 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 we need we figured it out maybe we need you know this number of pallets 40 pallets and then 240 tools to do that so so so, so then he called name ma'am 72 72 hours for three days Friday nights to you know morning time to Monday three days off you know that was a concept machine in 1991 so five axis machine that with 
240 pallets, 240 tools. So, but it was too early as a day. So, uh, we, uh, at the time, you know, the five axis cam or five phase cam was not available. You know, uh, so it was very difficult for us to do to sell or promote that machine. But we are so ahead at the time. You know, it was just you know, you know, a unique idea from you know uh, my you know uh, predecessors you know uh, uh, doing things. So yeah, mm -hmm. agreed. Mm -hmm. 1991. Mm -hmm. I mean. We're talking over 30 years at this point. It's incredible. Now, right. here is the segue that I'm excited to bring to you. I have to stand up for this a little bit. Right. Katsu, you don't have to, but look <laughs> at what is behind me. Are you kidding me? These machines, what is being fed? We're looking at 72 pallets, 72 massive pallets. And this is kind of the birth idea of where the MAM 72 came from, right? So That's right. as we continue to develop, Right. This is the birthplace. Can you talk about the mindset of how that worked? Well, at the time, you know, uh, we, this was, you know, uh, this is going to be third sort of cell systems, you know, uh, uh, we, we did. So, uh, and the first one was, we didn't have, you know, universal head or uh, uh, training on type, you know, uh, 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 force fifth axis machine. So what we had to do was two horizontal, two five, uh, two vertical machine to do in a uh, 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 five-phase machining, so so, and then, um, and then this concept of you know unmanned operation for you know 72 hours. So uh, we had at the time 64 pallets like this, you know, uh, to two uh, four machines together uh, to do this in you know, a uh, high mix, low volume type you know operation. So so that was you know in in a sense it was coming from our necessity. Uh, to build our type of machine, you know, we don't have big number of you know uh, uh, machines to be built, but we do need this much, that much, etc. We gotta be flexible. So that's how we came up of idea of in this MAM systems. It's it was originally, as I said, two vertical, two horizontal mixed together in a five phase machining center. So then, it's second generation. You know, we did you know our six thirty, the five axis, etc. Over there. So then now it's third generation with in the robotizing system with the devolving washing machine and then IoT on it. That's how we did here. So, Yeah, I think the industry has really started to learn about the advantages of pallet chain system. Right. Thanks to the dedication of mm. companies, Matt Sura, right? right? But I think about this and I bring this up because high mix, low volume, mm. This was not a concept that was understood previously. This is an education that needed to be placed because if anyone says the word automation, right. we think I need a hundred parts, a thousand parts, 10,000 parts, a million parts. And you guys kind of revolutionized the concept and idea that I can have one or two or three and I can still run through the night mm. and offer full automation solutions. Right, that's true. You know, um, it's, it, as I said, it, because of our necessity, also, you know, it was a requirement from you know, our main customer base job shops. Job shop, you know, they don't do just one part or two kinds of parts. They do have variety of parts to be cut. So, so you know, the machine has to be, in a sense, very versatile to, to cope with this high in mix and low volume and in a variety of materials, you know, aluminum, you know, uh, uh, steel cutting or exotic titanium, etc. And then also, I must say, you know, uh, because of the uh, this uh, high mix, low volume, you know, so palletizing system has to be flexible enough to cope with you know, uh, uh, and then scheduling, etc. That's how we in uh, started. And then also, you know, one more thing, you know. Uh, job shop requirement, you know, uh, they cannot just finishing. They have to do laughing, laugh cutting, really, you know, bottom, you know, heavy cutting, and also semi finishing and finishing high power, high speed cutting. So one machine can do everything. That's you know, job what the job shop requires. So, so these are kind of sort of elements, you know, uh, why we had this kind of. Uh, systems in here so there is a regular and empowering conversation that's happening right uh, now uh. 
where if we have the ability mm. to take multiple operations uh -huh. and reduce the overall machine capacity uh -huh. and do things in one, as mm. you're saying, right. have a trustworthy system that when I come in on Monday from the weekend, right. it's going to be precise enough mm -hmm. that I don't have to do any secondary operations as well. How much real estate space am I saving? How much right. time am I saving? How much user operator uh, wasted time am mm -hmm. I saving? Mm -hmm. It all goes into this combination of saying, this is how we can make profitability. Mm -hmm. This is how we compete on a global scale. Mm -hmm. And this is how we can rely on companies like Matsura. Right, that's right. So, and then besides that, I would say, you know, you know uh, from the experience through our uh, operation in you know, a manufacturing area here, and as I said, two vertical, two horizontal, and then palletizing system, you know, uh, in a pallet repeatability is very key. In, uh, is a big, and then five axis is, much more, in a sense, in, uh, easier to to do one checking, okay? To do, you know, I know it's kind of um, five-phase cutting in one checking, but in you know, horizontal machining center, vertical machining, you have to change the, you know, uh, 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 pallet. Then it, it's it's very, it, uh, operation to operation, it's just different, you know, uh, from the machine to machine. So, so we learned a lot from our you know, manufacturing, you know, experience in, in, in inside. So that's how we feed back into our machine to be, uh, how to say, flexible enough and you know, stable enough to, to cope with this unmanned operation, so. Yeah, mm. agreed. Mm. And having the pleasure and privilege to walk through this factory today, mm -hmm. learn from you, mm -hmm. to see a specialized room for your own made spindles, Hi. to see every single one of your pallets being ground on its own individually instead of in a whole line of them, a whole line of pallets, right? Mm -hmm. And to see the hand scraping that's done, not just on the heavy parts with lots of deflection, right. but the smaller pieces as well, mm -hmm. to me shows myself and the audience the dedication that Matt Sura gives mm -hmm. to making sure that the machines are exactly what they want, not just for today or mm -hmm. tomorrow, but for decades to come. Right. Because machine never lies, okay? So, so we, we have to put the care in, okay? That will give us a you know, uh, benefit afterwards, the longevity of machine, etc. Then what I meant is machine never lies. It means, uh, let's say, you know, uh, there is, if we had the machine stress, let's say, that would give us sort of, you know, uh, later sort of side effect, you know, because of the stress machine, you know, we can do uh, electrically, make it straight, but because of the stress, it's going to be more sort of, you know, aware, awareness over there. So eventually it will, you know, be out of line, this alignment and so forth. So machines should be stress-free as possible and as much as possible. That's, you know, uh, it should be so for the sake of longevity. So, so that's uh, sort of, you know, our care we put in. So and not only straight, you know, on the face of the scraping, but also very detail, very you know, uh, different angle and so forth, where spindle sit, where in ball screw sit, etc. So it's a small bit, but it's, it makes a big difference afterwards. So. Uh, Katsu, mm -hmm. I feel like I could talk to you forever on right. camera. Right. I might even have to put you on a podcast. You're so <laughs> enjoyable to talk to. I can feel yeah. your passion. I know right. the energy can be felt through the camera as well. And just let me say, mm -hmm. if it's okay with you, you are also charismatic mm -hmm. and creative, <laughs> just like your father. So please keep up the good work. And thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with me today. Right. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much.